Hey, what's up guys? My name is Avery, and with everything going on around in the world, I decided I need to work a little bit more on my resume and also my GitHub page, because if I'm going to need to get at my own job soon, if I need to do anything like that now that my school has been out for a while, I'm going to have to go ahead and make my resume and my GitHub look a little bit better than it was before. So I went around and asked some people what I should be doing on there, how I should make it look better, and some projects that I could be working on. So that's actually why I haven't been uploading as much lately. I've been doing some of my own personal stuff. And one of those things that I decided to do was to learn the Go language. So what is Go for you guys that don't know? It's basically a language that started a little bit less than 10 years ago. It's being created by a team at Google, but it's an open source project. And it's being created by some of the people that formerly created BSD and the C language. So the idea of it is that they took everything they knew, they decided what was best, and they started from the ground up to create a whole new language that's going to be based off of C somewhat, and it's going to be everything that they think could be an improvement of C, along with all these other languages. So I decided I went ahead and I learned Go within a day, and I made this sample game right here using Go and a ported SDL2 library that someone else created. It's up on GitHub. I'll have the link in the description. And I just want to talk about my ideas, what I learned from Go, what I liked about it, and what I didn't like about it. And if you guys are new here to the channel, um, if you guys are interested, feel free to subscribe. I make other programming and game-related tutorials and videos, so go ahead and check that out afterwards. And I also have some important news for everyone that's part of the channel, everyone that's subscribed, so go ahead and wait till the end of the video if you guys want to hear about that. And let's jump right into it. So if anyone's been programming for a while, they are custom their own syntaxing for their own languages. And when you jump into Go, you might realize some of the things in here are a little bit different than most other languages. For example, this right here. You have var, the name of your variable, let's call it age, and then let's say it's an integer. You have to put in a var, the name of the variable, and then an integer. It's kind of a weird formatting. It's just something I didn't really like about it. It just looks kind of odd. I don't care what you have to say var if you're also saying the variable type. I don't know why you're putting the variable type at the end. Maybe some people like this. I just found it a bit ugly. There's also this walrus looking thing right here. Colon and equal. It's actually pretty useful. It's for setting and declaring a variable at the exact same time. But if you're not used to seeing it, it might look a little bit odd. I know in some languages like Pascal, Pascal it looks like that. But it's just something that looks odd right off the bat. Another thing, which maybe you might be used to, depending on what language you're in, if you're just using C itself, you might be used to it, but there are so many versions of the exact same variable. There's an integer, integer 32, bit 64, float, float 32, float 64, and you may say, Avery, all other programming languages have this exact same thing, but in here, maybe, I guess it's like this in C as well, there's, it's a lot, you just have to be casting for one thing to another. Um, you can't do math with multiple things together. So if I have one library that uses one type of number, I have another library that uses another type of number, I also have the math library that uses one, and then my own variables use a different one. I'm changing them back and forth, back and forth. I have to, at least in my program that I did, I had use SDL, which I believe was int 32 or 64. Then I was using a math function for sine and cosine and random, and it was giving me different numbers, and you just have to put them all back and forth together. In C++, it has some of these things, which I'm used to, but in Go, it's just a lot more than all of those used to. Another thing that I thought was kind of ugly about it, but kind of makes it look a little more simple at the exact same time, is there's a lot less parentheses. You have your if, your for statement. You're not putting a parenthesis on there. You just say if, put out the if statement, and you just put everything that you want to do afterwards. Same thing with a for. There's no while loop or anything like that. It's just for. So if you want to have while running, you'll just say for running. And that's just how it goes. And another thing I noticed, I could be wrong. I think the Boolean, it has to say true or false. I can't plug in a zero. I can't plug in a one. Because then going back to the other problem, it thinks I'm putting in an integer. So you have to put in true or false. So that makes it harder if you want it to convert it to an integer. You can't compare it to other things. It needs to be true or false. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Okay, here are some things that really bugged me when I was making this code that I made with STL2 and Go. And the first thing is that Go doesn't have macros. I know that's something that maybe you guys don't all care about, but to me, I kind of did. I had to change up some stuff. I need to make some constant variables. And also another thing I go, the way you have constants, it's a little bit different. You don't have a macro. If you want a macro, you might put it all caps like you do in some other languages. But capitalizing and lower casing in Go is a little bit different. It just means if your variable in your package is public or private. So it kind of changes up some stuff. So if I put a capitalization in my constant of variable, it's going to also make that thing public for other packages, as far as I can tell. But there are some other ways to do something similar to macros. You can have some sort of predefined variable, and then whenever you compile it with a go command, you can pass in some sort of information, but even then it's a little bit different. Go is also only partially object-oriented, which... For all of the things I had to do, that was fine. But I think if I were to do more complex stuff, it would make it a little bit harder for people that only do object-oriented. That's because Go doesn't really have its own type of hierarchy, which it doesn't really know exactly what it is. At the, ex at the same time, it's kind of good because you can use it for all different types of things. But at the same time, if you just want to jump into the code, you don't know. If you want to learn about it, you don't know how it wants you to structure it. It doesn't really know how you want it to structure it either. It can't really tell you. And with that, there's also another problem, is the fact that there's not as many tutorials out there as other languages. So, you don't really know what it is, and there's not that many people to teach you what it is. And that's just because the language is new, so there's not as many tutorials, there's not as many libraries, and there's not as many IDE support. But that's just because it's a new language. Another thing I noticed is that there's no overloading, no generics, and no templates. Well, I don't really use templates that much in C++. I would like to have some sort of generic stuff and some sort of overloading. I wanted to have two different functions with the exact same name but pass in different parameters and in Go you can't do that. So I can't have one parameter where you pass in a rectangle which is a struct and I can't have another parameter where I pass in x, y coordinates and the width and the height. They need to have different function names. That's just something that kind of bugged me at, the, at first but I think I'll be able to get used to it. And before we keep going with today's video, I just want to remind you of today's sponsor, me. If you like what you see, subscribe to me. Let's keep going. Such ingratitude after all the times I've saved your life. So in other languages, I have a hard time dealing with multi-threading and how it all works. In Go, it's a lot more simple than some other languages that I've already seen before. They have something, it's called concurrency, but to me, it kind of seems just like multi-threading. They have concurrency in channels and a lot of things like that, and it kind of makes it a lot easier to use. I won't explain how it all works right here. This isn't a tutorial or nothing, but basically in Go, you can just pass in Go. It's a little line you can put in there. You say Go, you can have channels, and make it so we can running more than one thing at once. It, I kind of need to get a little bit better at it because as you can see right here, I kind of got a little buggy. I put Go in my game loop right here and made it so it's concurrent, but I didn't use any sort of channels or anything like that. Nothing sending information from one thread to the other, so it kind of made it a little look a little bit buggy. Ghost functions also have multiple return values, which is something I've always wanted in a lot of my programming languages. I think it's just something that can be served as super useful and just a lot better it's kind of it's not really needed but i think it it's a great addition to have in any sort of programming language i know you can return a struct you can also return memory points of references and whatnot but i think returning multiple values is also something super useful go is also super easy to port i know other languages can be pretty easy to port as well but even though this language is new it's super easy to port you the go command on the terminal or your command prompt makes it so you can compile it to different things. It's pretty great to use. Um, speaking of the go command prompt, you can also use this format command, which will format all your code. Maybe you're in spaces or tabs, but it'll format it into the way that's the code for Go. Um, it's the default format that all Go programs should be in. It makes it look pretty nice. Once again, if you care about spaces or tabs, maybe this is important to you guys, but I think the format looks pretty nice. There's also go git which 
I think maybe it's only for GitHub, but maybe it's just for getting any sort of package or library. You just do it from the command line, and you can just pull a library that's out there online, and it'll go to your Go path, which is in your home directory, so you don't have to be sharing your stuff with other people. And it's just a simple way to install your own library or package um, for your own Git projects. I thought it was super simple. I, all I had to do that was go Git, and then I put in a link for the GitHub for the SDL2 port that I found, and it set it all up for me. It was super useful. Go also has its own proper documentations. It's a way to generate documentations with GoDoc. And I know there's a lot of other stuff out there. There's PyDoc, there's Doxygen, there's a lot of other things for your own documents for different languages. But I really like this GoDoc. I thought it's really nice looking. It's just well put together. And I think it's a lot better than most other documentations that I've seen for other languages. That being said, these are all the things that I had to say about Go. I learned it within a day. I made the program once again right here. So there's a lot more I can learn about it. There's a lot more. Maybe I can get better about it. Maybe I didn't understand everything. But these are just my simple thoughts on Go. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, go ahead and hit a like button right there below. If you guys are new to the channel, hit subscribe. And if you have any questions, if you want to learn Go yourself, you can point out some stuff in the comments below. I'll be able to answer anything to the best of my knowledge. And along with that, even though I only know a little bit, I'm learning Go more and more from now on. And I decided I'm going to be making a short tutorial series where I'm making a game similar to this one right here below. We're going to set up Go. We're going to set up all the other things you need to set up. All the packages, all the libraries, even IDE and uh, stuff for art. And we're making a simple game just like this. So if you guys are interested in that, just let me know. And go ahead and check out this video right here on isometric stuff where I talked about how you can use isometric tiles in your game. I said before, if I can get 75 likes on this video, then I'll make a tutorial for that. So if you guys haven't already seen that video and you're interested in using C++ and SDL2 to make a simple isometric game, go ahead and check that out and give it a like. And also another news that I wanted to mention is not related to me at all, but if you guys haven't already seen the Unreal um, game demo, it's on the PS5 if you haven't already seen that, go ahead and check it out. It's beautiful looking. It's super awesome looking. And there's also the Cherno video where he discusses a lot of the stuff about it. All these videos will be in the description. You go ahead and check them out. And another thing that's completely not related to anything else that I've been talking about at all. Anything related to my channel or anything. If you have Netflix, I think in the last week or so, the Avatar was added on there. So yeah, definitely go ahead and check that out. If you guys like the Avatar, if you haven't already seen it, go and watch it for the first time. But yeah, thanks again for watching today's video and see you guys again next time.